JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 19th. I am Harala Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar turned south against uh, all the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It lost the most ground versus GBP, NZD and NOC, while it underperformed uh, the least versus uh, uh, it underperformed the least versus the Canadian dollar, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. The relative weakness of the safe havens yen and franc combined with the relative strength of the kiwi suggests that markets uh, traded in a risk-on fashion uh, yesterday and today in Asia. However, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, this was not the case. Major EU and US indices were a sea of uh, red, with market sentiment being more on the mixed side during the Asian, uh, during the Asian trading today. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid 0.72 and 0.21% respectively, but China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI gained 0.57 and 0.68%. And uh, Equities continued to slide on rising bond yields, but the US dollar failed to capitalize uh, this time. Germany's 10-year yield posted its, uh, highest, its highest close uh, since uh, June. Uh, the UK once traded at a 10th, a ten, at a tenth month uh, high, while uh, the US one stayed uh, near a one-year high. Usually, higher yields due to concerns of higher inflation are, supportive, are a supportive factor for the US dollar, but uh, this time the greenback may have felt the heat of the disappointing initial jobless claims, which rose to 861,000 from an upwardly revised 848,000 the week before. The forecast was for a decline to 765,000. This adds uh, to evidence that the recovery in the US labor market is uh, slowing down. Now, as for today, investors may focus on the preliminary PMIs uh, for February from uh, several uh, Eurozone nations, the Eurozone as a whole, the UK and the US. Eurozone's manufacturing PMI is anticipated to have inched down to 54.3 from 54.8, while the services one is forecast to have risen to 45.9 from 45.4. This is likely to drive the composite index fractionally higher to 48 from 47.8. Although a minor improvement, this still points to contraction and we don't think that this will affect uh, much the euro. For the euro to gain, we believe that an upside surprise above 50 may be needed. In any case, the minutes of the latest ECB gathering revealed that other members shared Lagarde's view that the downside risks to the economic outlook were now uh, less pronounced, but added that uh, not every increase in, uh, in, nominal, in nominal yields should be, should be interpre interpreted as unwarranted tightening, suggesting that monetary policy will stay extra loose. They also said that uh, the projected path of inflation continu continues to be distant uh, from inflation target, uh, which, uh, which, comes in, uh, which comes in contrast with current uh, market expectations over a fast rise in, in, in inflation. There are no forecasts for the UK PMIs, while in the US both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have slid somewhat to 58.5 and 57.6 from 59.2 and 58.3. 
Now, and this question is what could be the reaction if we get a positive surprise? With equities, will equities uh, rebound on signs of a faster economic recovery? Or will they fall as something like that may also mean faster inflation in the not too distant future? As for our view, with the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering confirming that the Fed is likely to stay accommodative uh, for the years to come and that inflation is, is expected to overshoot 2% for some time in the years after, 2000, after 2023, we believe that tightening concerns due to higher inflation may start fading and thereby equities could rebound. For the dollar, it appears to be simpler. Recently, the currency has lost its uh, safe haven appeal, which means that uh, better prints could prove uh, positive. As uh, for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early European morning, the UK retail sales for January came out, with both the headland core uh, retail sales falling by more than anticipated. Yet the pound remained on an upside trajectory amid uh, Britain's aggressive vaccination uh, program. Later in the day, we get the US existing home sales for January, which are expected to have declined 1.5% month over month after rising 0.7%. Canada's retail sales for December are also due to be released. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have fallen to minus 2 and minus 2.5% month over month from plus 1.3 and plus 2.1% respectively. As for the speakers, we have two on today's agenda and those are uh, Richmond Fed President Thomas Barking and uh, Boston Fed President Eric, Eric uh, Rosengren. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are, inter who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.